Means it got long, floppy bunny ears, a huge tongue like an anteater's, the skin's sort of brownish and pasty white. Uh, we've got a big, my nose, I've got a big long face like a pony's. Um, my eyes are totally on stalks, so I can see behind me. Uh, that's paraphrasing Sally from episode 20 of Darfs and Droids, coming up with a new character, an alien being. That she chooses to call Dar Jar Binks for some outlandish reason that only a ten year old would know. Of course, if you've been reading the webcomic Darfs and Droids, you know the central conceit is that it's Star Wars as a role playing game. So, but this is an introduction to creating an interesting character, creating a memorable character. And that incident illustrates the first ingredient you should throw into your character imagination. Make your character look interesting, visually interesting. If you're probably you're not going to go with something as strange and outlandish as a Gungan, but even with a human, you can have a scar down there or an eye patch. Or a wild head, you can have a mohawk, or you know, something else. Pair out spikes, punk spikes, you know, punk spike hair. Um, the Slayer Dwarves from the Warhammer series definitely have interesting hair and strange wild beards. If your character has a beard and you can go to town describing it. Because you are playing a fantasy game. If you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. And the idea of fantasy is that your character is fantastic. Your character is incredible. They can be visually stunning they can be arresting in some way maybe even if they're human maybe they are purple skinned why are they purple skinned humans because it's in a fantasy world there is no rule which says the humans have to have the same range of skin color that they have on earth you're on a totally different planet a totally different world a world where magic and gods and demons determine how it, what everyone looks like so you can have purple humans pink humans Humans with orange spots. We have orange humans, totally. They can have weird skin colorations, weird hair. They can look a little odd and strange and unusual. And then there are all the weird and wonderful alien races, elves, dwarves, thrikings, beast men. All of them are strange and unusual, and they don't have to look normal. They can be are as you can make them so make your character visually stunning in some way and then give them a few personality traits if you can do the voices then do the voices have a different voice for every character have a voice so that when you say something in character people know it's in character that the character is saying this and have your normal voice for when you say Pass the chips. Can I have that dice there? Uh, what exactly is going on in the scene? And then your, your character voice can be the voice of what you're saying. You say, I do this. I do this. Or, um, uh, I think I do this. And you can put a lot into a voice. You can put a lot of things into the voice to make your character seem bold. If your character is bold, and they probably have a bold tone. Aha! I will do this. I will fetch. Well, they can be shy um, or timid. Um, uh, uh, you can just pause, ums and ers and excuse me's, and suddenly you've got a timid character, and everyone recognises it as being timid. Always try and show your character. Do not tell. Do not say, I am a scary person. Be a scary person. Do scary things. Look scary. Maybe you have a huge scar down here. Maybe... You are missing one eye, and you are a half orc. If you're a half orc missing one eye, if look, pl other players are know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, they know that that is a sign that you are a follower of Groomsh and probably a cleric of Groomsh. So what do you do when the cleric, of, when someone who looks just like a cleric of Groomsh, turns up, says, "Hi." I'd like to be your in your adventuring party. And I'm totally lawful, but good, look, I've got the card. 
I speak the alignment language. You're really gonna trust someone who looks like an eye of Grooch to be your party healer or your party leader or whatever the hell they claim to be. But you're never gonna forget them. And if they do turn out to be good and noble and honest and true, that's something you've got a very interesting character, a very scary character. He's just missing an eye. He's actually got a disadvantage there. Uh, so, wear your traits on your sleeve. Make them obvious, because the players rock into games and they're tired, they've had a hard day, or it's, you know, it's been a long day at work, it's been a long day crawling the family and you can do whatever. They might not be able to pick up on subtlety. They certainly are not mind readers. No one's a mind reader. No one can read what's going on only in here. If you've got this cool internal monologue going on and all these deep dark secrets that you never tell anyone, well what good is it? It's no good whatsoever. You've got to let the secrets out. You've got to let the traits out. You've got to let slip everything so that the other people around the table get to know about it and get to be entertained by it. So wear your traits on your sleeve and show them. If you are brave, act brave. Do not say I am brave. If you are timid, act timid. If you are frightened by something, be frightened by something. And it's cool to be frightened by something. It is cool to have extra disadvantages in them because flaws are what we remember about characters. What do you remember about the Joker? That he is batshit insane. What do you remember about Batman? So he's got a massive bat complex and a bat fetish and he's grieve, still grieving about his parents and he's got this entire revenge thing going on. Those are flaws. No one really cares that he's a badass fighter and everyone seems to know that he's the world's greatest detective. If you ask Joe Public Batman's a detective, they'll go, no. He doesn't do any detecting in all those movies. He just hits people. And then he's got that bat thing going on. Everyone remembers the bat thing. Everyone knows Superman is defined by how alone he is. There's no one else on earth quite like him. So, flaws make you memorable. Flaws make you interesting. Iron Man is a lot more interesting because he is an alcoholic and a womanizer. These are problems he has to overcome. The fact that he's got an awesome suit of armor is So, have some interesting flaws. Dean Dungeon Dragon suggests that you should have one flaw. Pick a few more. You know, be overconfident and a womanizer and a drunkard. You can do all those things. You can put that as all into one character. Or be, have, have a terrifying fear or something utterly harmless. Spiders. You are terrified by spiders. Not huge monster spiders. You know, you can sort of deal with those. But, tiny little crawly thing. That totally freaks you out. And if you're playing something which, you know, people don't view as typically being afraid of little spiders, like a barbarian. Imagine everyone's seen Conan. Everyone has seen all the hulking Conan types that traipse across Dungeons and Dragons tables. They're all pretty much the same. So if you're going to stand out, you're going to be memorable. Give them just an irrational fear of spiders. And when there's a little spider, or it's even just a normal scene, a normal occurrence, you can still just go totally, SPIDER! And say, I leap behind the wizard, and hide and say, kill it, kill it, kill it, stop it, stop it, stop it! Because there's no rule to say that there is a little spider crawling across that table. Or, you know, hiding under the table and waving its legs at you. It's just a spider. You can put that in. And you can be afraid of it. So, have things on your sleeve. Have your characteristics be known. Be up there. Be loud and proud about what your character is. Because that will make you interesting. That will make you memorable. No one, remem no one remembers the guy who just sits there and rolls the dice. Everyone remembers the people who had the interesting character traits. Lastly, do not overpower the rest of the rest of the players. Let them have their time in their sun too. If they start to act up, start start to do their interesting thing, encourage them in it. Act, play along with them. Get behind whatever they're doing. No one likes a naysayer in these games. No one likes someone who's always says no. Get behind them. Agree with them. Even if, even if it is the dumbest plan ever, just get behind them. Get one. Because people also like 
cooperative players. People also like people who help them along. No one likes someone who, whenever you come up with plans, says, no, well, that sounds too dangerous. It's only a piece of paper. Eat the food, drink the fucking water. So those would be my ideas on being an interesting character. Be fantastic. Be slightly off kilter. Have some interesting traits. Demonstrate those traits. And lastly, aid the other players in demonstrating their traits. As always, like, comment, subscribe.